typically, the lower a hurricane's pressure, the stronger its punch. And the top five most powerful are a group of heavy hitters. Here's the lowest pressure hurricanes to make landfall in the U.S. Starting at number five, the Indianola hurricane of 1886. There were two very powerful hurricanes in the late 1800s when it was a major port town in Texas. The first one killed as many as 300 people and then the second one came through and that was basically the end of Indianola. At number four, Andrew hit South Florida like a freight train. Andrew creamed the Bahamas and then was weakening as it was coming toward Florida. But then in just that last few hours, it started to strengthen again. And it continued to strengthen after it hit south of Miami. Coming in at number three, no one can argue with Katrina's intensity. One of the more surprising things to me about Hurricane Katrina was how broad, how large its wind field was. In fact, I was on the Mississippi Gulf Coast about 60 miles to the east of where it made landfall, and we still had wind gusts over 100 miles per hour there. Number two, 1969. The Mississippi coast felt the wrath of Camille. It had 190 mile per hour estimated winds at landfall and it brought one of the most destructive storm surges that ever occurred along the Gulf Coast. And the most powerful U.S. hurricane on record, the Labor Day hurricane of 1935. It was so intense, it had a central pressure 30 millibars lower than Andrew did at landfall. The 1935 Labor Day hurricane is one of only three Category 5 hurricanes that made landfall in the U.S. during the 20th century. The other two, Camille and Andrew. I'm meteorologist Mike Bettis.